Hey folks, welcome to TDL TV uh, today. Um, interestingly, I, I googled TDL TV and there were some cage fighters that showed up, so we might be changing the name there. Helen Walker popped in to talk about this. Again, can't wait, love to share this work. Alrighty, so um, what we're gonna talk about is emmet therapy for dogs and also emmet therapy for animals. So far, people do it on uh, dogs. Horses was the first one and also on humans as well. Yeah. So, um, this is Gabe, by the way. Welcome, Gabe. Photo bombing again. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Now, he's going to be our, um, our man on the ground, and uh, Helen's probably going to do some manoeuvres on me as well, because Gabe gets emmet therapy all the time. He has it very regularly, so he won't particularly be a great demo model, because he's not really very sore, but you'll get an idea of how the moves work. Colin, on the other hand, has a few restrictions. So we can show a bit more there. So we, we, we want to see what it was before starting and what it was after. Gabe is one of the most flexible puppies and well-balanced puppies on the planet because he gets Emmett every evening, I would say. Um, so we're going to have a chat about that. Now, uh, let's start. Uh, what is Emmett for dogs? Right, Ross Emmett. He started this quite a while ago. Give us a background on Ross Emmett. Ross Emmett is a fantastic uh, bodywork therapist and educator. He's based in Townsville and he's had dogs all his life. The, in fact, he commonly says he prefers dogs to people. Um, he hands was... up, hands up, <laughs> tick like, hit share. If you prefer dogs to people, like the post to share it on. Ross, you might be watching, so g'day. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. Yeah, and Ross's background is as a, um, a obedience judge, a Queensland um, obedience judge and a trainer. He was a senior trainer and he's worked with dogs all his life in the show ring, uh, in trialing and also he's a real bushy, so he actually had hunting dogs as well. You know what though, interestingly, uh, Ross took this to the human world in Emmet therapy, That's but correct. he started developing this on his own dogs because he was noticing that when he touched certain muscles and, and released trigger points around the body in conjunction with doing other trigger points at the same time, he got a much better result. That's right. And that's where Emmet therapy was born. So isn't that interesting? It's done a bit of a circle. He's actually come back to his passion, which was working with dogs. And if you're in business and you're working and you're working on your passion, it's working for love. Okay, so let's carry on. So what is it all about? We're gonna start some demos in the tick. Um, what is what is it used for? Why would you want to know how to do Emmet for dogs? And by the way, folks, we'll just keep repeating this. At the end of this, where you can click on the link if you want to, you'll see when Helen is running some short courses and some two-day courses. That's so right. you could learn how to do this on your own dog if you need to, and you could also uh, have therapy. You could book in for a therapy class. Uh, but there is a two-day course where you could become a qualified Emmet therapist for dogs, I believe. There are. There are several levels. There are five levels in the training. And for those who go all the way through, uh, many people find that their passion takes over. They may not have intended to do all the training. And at the end, they find they're a, an Emmet therapist. So you can start a short course on, the, on February 16 or May 11, and there is a two-day course. There is a couple of spots left for the two-day course, so it is filling up uh, on... 9th and 10th of March. 9th and 10th of March, and then you'll have to wait until June. June. June, okay, okay. cool. So, let's have a look. Where were we? Um, you, you, you carry so on. So, we were gonna say, why would a person um, f uh, be interested in learning Emmett for dogs? What would be the benefit to their own dog? As a complementary therapy, we don't treat conditions per se. That's in the realm of the medical um, and vets. This is a beautiful addition uh, to working alongside veterinary treatment. But for those whose animals don't have those kind of issues and may have just everyday restrictions, their dogs may be aging, they may have arthritic um, problems, they may have restrictions, a little bit sore, not quite as comfy or mobile as they were. Could be a younger dog who's overdone it. We all know dogs like that. 
fly balling, whatever it might be, they I, strain yeah. themselves. Even jumping in the back of the ute. Yeah, and the car stopping, that's quite a classic yeah. one, and the dog going forward, having a, a collar on, or some sort of restraint's going to cause some sort of uh, tension or whatever later on down the track. So this will help um, uh, reverse that situation. So um, here we are. Let's look at some techniques. So we're going to do some demo, and we're going to use uh, young Gabe here as a demo dog, and then uh, explain. Um, and then we'll go back to the courses. So yeah, not long now, stay tuned. Don't forget to share this. Do hashtag live uh, and hashtag Emmett for the number four dogs. Okay, cool. All right, so let's start with it. The most, one of the most common ones for humans and dogs is neck release because they've got collars and leads on. So let's have a chat about that. So um, obviously we need to have our dogs restrained when we're not on our own property. Most dogs therefore will be wearing a collar, a lead or a harness and this can all have an effect on their range of movement and their comfort in their neck. Now my older boy who I didn't bring with me, he's quite stiff when he turns. So away, I tried this on Gaby this morning, he's very bendy, so he's not particularly the best demo model here. Um, obviously, as a neck move, in an ideal world, our pup would be standing. Gabe is not the most compliant demo dog. However, the great thing about Emmett is that it is very dog friendly. So in a treatment situation, if your dog is not able to stand or not comfortable to stand, we do work with the dog how it is because that's important that there's no pressure put on the dog. So with Emmett, we use, these are our Emmett fingers. These are the tools of our trade. They're our longest fingers are Emmett fingers and we there are certain principles that go with Emmett and that's in terms of the pressure we use the timing the amount of time we hold the moves and the precision with the moves so we either will use our Emmett finger to do a hold move or we will use our thumb or Emmett finger to do a switch move so this neck release move is helping and if I show you Gaby's movement here, usually he's food driven. Today, there's a lot of stuff going on. So we'd see how bendy. He's pretty bendy there. He can have that. And here. So if you did that with your dog and you, you made him sit or stand and you stopped him from moving his back legs and you held a treat around to see how he was moving, like you would probably get an indication that he had very good movement or that there was some sort of problem. Perhaps a restriction one side more than the other. Or pain, would you see pain? How would you see pain? Often they just wouldn't be able to go you know, any further. That, um, and also it could, um, could show up in that they may be short stepping in the front as well, you know, because if, if there's a, a restriction in the neck, yep. the shoulder can also then be restricted. Ah. So the great thing about Emmett is though we have specific corrections for particular areas of the body, often the releases cover a much broader area. So we don't deal particularly with the anatomy in terms of using muscle names because actually the effect is far, far greater than just that specific right, muscle okay. area. Yep. Um, hence, a neck release move can have a bigger effect on even helping shoulder movement yep. and sinus type drainage. Oh wow. So the little moves here that we would do is I'm using my thumb in this instance and I'm doing little switches over this neck, which you can't really see on a hairy dog. And then here, behind his ear and on his neck, we find a location point. And again, I'm doing little switches like that. And I would do, the res if, if Gaby was very restricted on one side and not the other, I would do the restricted side um, up to three times. And I would then maybe balance it off and check if the other side maybe just works. So if someone did the course, they would get to recognize what to feel for yes. and then what to move. And, and what to move. Yeah. And it, the, the teaching is very, very hands-on. It's very yeah. practical course um, because it's available. Ross Emmett's a very practical guy. He's a dog man, you know. He wasn't, um, he wasn't a vet. So for him, it's about 
What's the dog in front of me showing me? Where does it seem to be restricted? How by using my fingers in particular places can I help that muscle group to yep. relax? Right, I get it. Okay, so let's have a look at the lumbar. So lower back lumbar. Um, why would there be problems there and, and how can we fix that? So with some dogs, um, again, they may have soreness um, they, through age or injury and often there can be then a restriction in lateral flexion depending what they do. He's a very waggy boy being a Cocker Spaniel. Mm -hmm. um, so far he's not restricted. But um, often you'll see dogs with a, a quite a severe roaching problem. Uh -huh. And then with the tension in this area, it, um, it restricts that movement through the back legs as well as not being comfortable. They just can't stretch out. So we see our, our dogs trying to just naturally adjust themselves by stretching and, but sometimes, you know, they'll always favor one side. They'll always lie one side more than the other because there's a bit of a discomfort. So a move that we would do here, we have certain key points that we come back to in the training a lot. And, um, a point towards on some of our ribs is one of them here. Now you can't really see here because he's sitting down being non-compliant, but this is where we're using direct finger pressure. Uh -huh. This is direct finger and I'm holding them just a very light pressure. You can't really tell, but on my arm what it would be is like that. There's that slight dimpling in the skin. So it's not hard pressure. Emmet is a light touch therapy. So it's very well tolerated by the animals. And if they've had some uh, aggravation, some trauma, we want to sedate it, not irritate the tissue further. Uh-huh, cool. And also, we don't want them to think, I don't like this, it's, uh, it reminds me of the vet or horrible pro procedures. Okay, so look, Helen's got a list of all of these. There things. are many, there are many, many. <laughs> so, I mean, if you identified a problem with one of your dogs, you would be able to feel around and go, well, that's related to yep. this. So if I fix that, it's gonna help that point as well. That's right. And with Emmett, it's not procedural. You don't have to learn a whole lot of moves that you have to follow in sequence. With a dog, we would say, this is sore, I will address this. This is restricted, I will address this. Not, oh, I have to do all of this before I get there. It's very time efficient and the dog doesn't get overloaded. Oh, okay. And, and if you use a condition, do you have to continue to do this on that area um, uh, regularly, like once a day, once a week, or? No, no, you wouldn't. In as much as if the issue's been around a long time, it may benefit from being revisited. If, however, it's fixed, as Ross Emmett would always say, if there's air in the tire, you know, if you've got four tires and three of them are full of air and only one needs air putting in, you're not gonna put it in all of them. There you go. So it's Makes very practical. You do what's needed do and you area. don't overwork it. This is one of Helen's favorite ones. She said make <laughs> mention, special mention of this one. So this, let's have a look at the hamstring. He's sitting down. Let's look at our little buddy here. So this would be a move where we would come below the, uh, the seat bones, the sitting bones, mm -hmm. and we, actually it would be better on a standing dog, we would do a little switch, and then each time we actually move the leg inwards. So we're putting the muscle under load. We're tractioning that muscle. So this would be good, uh, the hamstring move, if there's short stepping, if the dog is short stepping, if sometimes this can get very, very tight if a dog you know, jumps or if they're unbalanced, the hammies, just like with people, you know, we can get very stiff, very restricted. Yeah. And of course, where it, where it inserts in the body will have an effect on that sacral and lumbar region as well. So a tightness here can actually have an impact up here as well. Right, so not a, if you're focusing on one area, uh, the one thing Helen mentioned last time, it's about rebalancing the body. Because if your dog is favoring something, it's not getting the work That's that right. it needs to, and you can start to get muscle degradation, and all of a sudden, you've got a bigger problem. But if you can learn how to do this, um, and you can address it before it happens. So let's have a look at the course dates. Uh, you can um, go down to, uh, or you can contact Helen. There's information on that link. 
go to our website, you'll see how to get in touch with Helen and um, book in for the short course. So, there is a two day. We're very excited about this, by the way, because we've waited in Perth for a long time to have Emmet for Dogs being taught over here. When, so this is the kind of start of it. Where did you go to learn to do Emmet for Dogs? I, it wasn't available here in the West. Uh, yep. So I did my first two levels in Far North Queensland. I went to Melbourne for my level three and for my levels four, five and accreditation, I went to England. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so you're really talking to, you know, someone who's in the know, uh, um, but, but Helen's brought that to Perth. So it's the first time you've been able to do Emmet for therapy, and this is going to be quite big. If you run a business and you want to put another arm to your uh, business, be it you're a um, uh, uh, dog groomer, uh, does house calls, or a dog washer, or you're a vet clinic, and you want to add this to your repertoire, you might want to send one of your staff along to have a look at the short course, see how you go, and then you can book in There's for the longer courses. There's still time then to join us on the level one course in March. That's right, still a couple of places in March. You can jump in on the 16th of February if the places don't fill up. You can then book yourself in for the June long course. So there's a two day course. And then there sounds like there's still a journey to go from there as well. There is, there Alrighty. is. Alrighty, so you're gonna give me some stuff? Yes. Okay. So because um, the technique started with animals, but it's also My first job. off been taught um, with people. All the moves, you know, we've, we have comparative anatomy. So the move that you saw on Gabriel for his neck, obviously co neck restriction is a very common problem for people. So Colin is going to turn his head both ways and we're going to see which side is worse. At the same time? One at a time. One time. Okay, turn left. Turn left. And that's pretty hopeless. So if he has his finger there, he's about this far away, his cheek from my finger. Now turn to the Even other side. Gabe feels sorry for <laughs> you. Thanks, Even buddy. Even Gabe, he says. And on this side, he's nearer. So it's less of a gap. So we're just going to do the restricted side. He's a very kissy boy. <laughs> that's Gabe, not Colin. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> So, excuse us a moment. Excuse us. Hang on, we're just going to have a private moment. Just a little moment. <laughs> so, All right. As we did the three little moves, oh, can't sorry. get to him. <laughs> Being photobombed by my own dog, it always happens. <laughs> and just as with Gaby, we came to the behind the ear. Same with people. I also teach the short course of this for people. So I find it's a very, it's, it makes it easy for me ex to explain to dog owners because I do t teach the human short course as well. So then with Emmett, we can do the moves up to three times. And each time our fingers are actually our eyes. It gives us a lot of information. We feel the change in tissue tension on the dog or on the person and as change occurs. So Someone at home with four legs is going to be very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it works on your cat too. On your cat. So, right. Lucky third time, lucky last. Give it a moment. Then Colin, let's suck it and see. Please turn to the left this time. It feels, it feels. So we now have this much of a gap as opposed to that. Go to the other side just out of interest. And so it's still more restricted on that side. Mm -hmm. So we'll just to be nice, give him one turn, otherwise he's gonna be wonky all day. It doesn't feel like a lot, but it does feel like something's happening. Yeah. So now with Emmett, we lock it in with action. It's functional movement. So Colin, turn your head as far as you can both ways, please. So he's gone further that way. Yep. And he's even gone further this way again, and I didn't touch it another time. So, dogs, people, same move on horses too. Thanks, buddy. Absolute <laughs> pleasure. All right, don't forget these dates. Click on the link, go to the website if you want to learn more, or even uh, from our last time we, we did a short intro, uh, one of our um, uh, clients or friends went up and saw Helen and uh, had their dog looked at as well. So, um, And he's gonna be joining our course, which is absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. That's great, okay. Norris, thanks guys, see you next week. Um, and don't forget to uh, give us lots of nice reviews. That'll be good. Thanks, Helen. Thanks.
Thanks, Colin. Bye.